Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about wireless LAN controllers and the CAPWAP protocol. In a large campus, configuring a large amount of wireless access points individually quickly becomes unmanageable. You can see in the example campus here, I've got my first wireless AP, which is configured with the corporate WLAN and its settings. And then I've set up the same configuration on the second wireless AP. Now that would be fine and easy to manage if I only had a couple of access points, but what if I had 200 different access points? Well, configuring them all separately would just really be unmanageable. So that is where a WLC comes in. A WLC, the wireless LAN controller, can be used as a central point of management and you can manage all of your access points from there. This is what some of our wireless LAN controllers look like. So over on the left here, you can see a couple of dedicated hardware WLCs. Different models are available. The bigger, more powerful models support a larger amount of access points. So you can see this smaller one down here at the bottom could be used in a smaller office. You can also get wireless LAN controller blades that fit into your switches or routers. So here's an example of a blade that goes into a switch and below there is a blade that fits into a router. A virtual wireless controller is also available, which runs in software and redundancy is supported. So you're gonna to want to double up on your wireless LAN controllers for redundancy. Standalone access points are known as autonomous access points. So if you don't have a wireless LAN controller controlling the AP, it's a standalone or autonomous AP. Access points which do have a WLC are known as lightweight access points. And the installed software image determines whether an access point is autonomous or lightweight. So you can get an access point from Cisco, the exact same model, and it can operate in either autonomous mode or in lightweight mode. The way you determine that is by putting the correct software image onto that AP. Use either the autonomous image or use the lightweight image. Okay, let's have a look at the first big way that using a wireless LAN controller makes it easier to manage a large amount of access points. And that is ZTP, zero touch provisioning. With zero touch provisioning, your access points discover the wireless LAN controller and then download their configuration from there. The way that they can discover where the wireless LAN controller is, is either via DHCP, so with this, you plug your access point into the wired network. It sends out a DHCP request to get its IP address, subnet mask and default gateway. And it will also get information about option 43, which gives it the IP address of the wireless LAN controller. So in DHCP, you've got your various options that you can configure in there, like IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. Option three is used to tell an access point the IP address of its wireless LAN controller. Another option you can use is by using DNS to tell the AP where its wireless LAN controller is. With Cisco APs, when they boot up, they are set up like this from the factory, but they will look for a DNS record for Cisco CAPWAP controller. So if they do get their IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and their DNS server, if they have not received option 43 from the DHCP server telling them the IP address of the wireless line controller, they will send out a DNS request asking for the IP address of Cisco CAPWAP controller. So if you've configured an address record on your DNS server for that, which includes the IP address of the wireless LAN controller, your APs can find out how to find it from there. And the other way that this will work is with a local subnet broadcast. So if your wireless LAN controller is on the same IP subnet and VLAN as the wireless access point, 
the wireless access point can find it by doing a broadcast. Obviously, if the wireless LAN controller is on a different subnet, then that wouldn't work. So you'd need to use DHCP or DNS. And it's typically DHCP that is going to be used for this. So the lightweight access point will discover the IP address of the wireless LAN controller through one of those methods. It will then connect to the wireless LAN controller and download its configuration from there. That includes what WLANs the access point should support and their settings and all the other settings for that access point. The wireless LAN controller also monitors the wireless quality and controls the channels and power of the access points. So because it's managing all of the different access points, it can set them up so they're using non-interfering channels. It will also set the power levels on the APs to make sure that they don't interfere with each other. It can also detect rogue APs as well. A rogue AP would be if a hacker has added an access point to the campus, which is broadcasting a legitimate SSID, trying to get people to connect in there, and then they'll be able to do bad things to those clients. Or maybe it's not a hacker, maybe it's just something that's happened by accident. Maybe an old AP that is not managed by the WLC. Well, you don't want that to be in your building. You want all of the APs to be managed. The wireless LAN controller will be able to detect rogue APs, report them to you so that you can correct that. We covered roaming in the last lecture, and this is possible with autonomous APs. So with roaming, your wireless stations can roam across wireless APs supporting the same WLANs. So in our example here, we have got the laptop here, and then you walk through the building, you get closer to the other AP, and your laptop will then associate wirelessly to the new AP. Now, you can do that with autonomous APs, but if you're using authentication, which you definitely should be, then because the authentication is, ha is handled separately on the two different APs, you're gonna have a break of service when it roams to the new AP. So if you're maybe on a phone call on your device, maybe you're using your phone and you're connected wirelessly and you're making a phone call, you're walking around the building, that's gonna cause a problem because you're gonna have drops as you're roaming. If you're using a wireless LAN controller, well, the authentication is offloaded from the APs to the wireless LAN controller. So you can get seamless roaming if you're using a WLC with no breaks in service. Okay, the protocol that is used for the communications between the wireless LAN controller and the access points is CAPLAP. That stands for Control and Provisioning of Wireless Access Points. It's an open standard protocol that enables your wireless LAN controller to manage the APs. With CAPLAP, the communications are encrypted inside a DTLS CAPLAP tunnel, and it uses UDP ports 5246 and 5247. So if you've got a firewall between your wireless LAN controller and an AP, make sure that those ports are open on the firewall. With a wireless LAN controller, some of the work is moved from the APs to the wireless LAN controller. That's why they're now called lightweight APs because they're not doing the same workload that we'd be doing if it were an autonomous AP. Real-time traffic is still handled by the AP in order to provide suitable performance. So this real-time traffic, if that was going to the wireless LAN controller and back again, that would add some additional delay, which would drop the performance level. So for that real-time traffic, where it can't really have any delay, that's still going to be handled by the AP. The rest of the traffic and responsibilities are going to be handled by the wireless LAN controller. And this functionality is known as split MAC. So the operations that will be handled by the AP are the client handshake when it's connecting, the beacons where the AP announces information about its WLANs and their SSIDs, performance monitoring. So the AP will do the actual performance monitoring, checking the quality in its coverage area. That information will, however, be sent to the WLC and the WLC is going to be taking action based on that information. Encryption and decryption is also handled by the AP and any clients that are in power save mode, those communications from the AP to them will also be handled by the AP. Okay, next up, let's look at the operations which will be handled by the wireless LAN controller. Authentication. 
So when you are going onto the wireless network and you enter in your password or your username and password, that authentication will be controlled by the wireless LAN controller. The roaming control also by the WLC, 802.11 to 802.3 communication. So all traffic that is going from the wireless to the wired LAN is going to be passing through the wireless LAN controller. You'll see some more information about this later because we need to talk about that more because it is important. Also the radio frequency management, so making sure that neighboring APs are not communicating on the same channel and causing interference, the WLC will handle that. And also the security management and the QoS management. Okay, so let's look at those traffic flows. So first off, looking at the traffic flow with an autonomous AP, so where we're not using a wireless LAN controller. And you can see here, we've got a wireless client and it is connecting to, it's communicating with the wired network. So the traffic goes to the AP, it will then tag it with the correct VLAN and send it on to the upstream switch. It's different when we're using a wireless LAN controller. Now you can see what happens is the client sends its packet up to the access point, then the access point will send it to the wireless LAN controller, the, then the wireless LAN controller sends it back to the switch again, and then it goes to the final destination. So you saw with an autonomous AP, it goes from the AP to the switch and then directly to the final destination. But when we are using a wireless LAN controller, it goes through the CAPWAP tunnel to the WLC and then it gets hairpinned back out onto the network again. So you can see all the traffic is passing through the wireless LAN controller. As well as that production traffic between your different endpoints, the management traffic where the wireless LAN controller is controlling the APs, that also passes through the CAPWAP tunnel as well. So you can see from here, there's, there's going to be a lot of traffic that is going through the wireless LAN controller. If you've got 100 APs and they're all communicating with devices on the wired network, rather than it going through the most direct path to get there, it's all going through the wireless LAN controller. So because of this, you want that wireless LAN controller to have enough bandwidth to support the throughput that's going through it. So typically you're not gonna have just a single physical connection from a wireless LAN controller onto the switch it's connected to. You're gonna want to have multiple physical connections there to give you enough bandwidth and you're gonna bundle them together into an ether channel. And the terminology in 802.11 and from Cisco is that is now called lag link aggregation. It's just the same as an ether channel. Okay, last thing to tell you about is Flex Connect. So again, as we were just talking on that last slide, all of the traffic between the devices on your wireless network and the wired network are going through the wireless LAN controller. This is not a problem if they're all in the same campus and you do have enough bandwidth on that connection between the wireless LAN controller and the switch. But if the access point was in say a small remote office and your wireless LAN controller was in the main office, that would cause a problem. Because if we had a wireless client here and it was communicating with that other wireless client, we don't want that traffic to go all the way over the WAN link to New York and then all the way back again. That's gonna add quite a bit of significant delay. So what we can use there is Flex Connect. With Flex Connect, traffic is forward locally. So you can see that the packet does not go over the CAPWAP tunnel all the way to New York and back again. We are just gonna forward that locally. So it's useful for small branch offices, which aren't big enough. You don't wanna to go to the expense of putting a wireless LAN controller in there. You don't want them to be an autonomous AP because you want to still have the central management. Well, in that case, you can use Flex Connect. Okay, that was everything I needed to tell you here. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad-free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.